there folks welcome back to cobra vids i know i know it's been a while since i've done a video but uh, i've been very very busy on the property and this is what this video is about i'm going to show you what i've been up to and why i haven't been posting uh well i gotta apply for monetization today is the 11th i think uh, that was the day that i can re-monetize so Hopefully they uh, they accept me back into the program so I start getting paid for the videos I post and the views I get. So anyway, um, I figured before we start this video, uh, I would, uh, well, first off, I'm wearing my Fuck Joe Biden shirt, but it's no longer valid. So I'm going to post an image right here, okay? What do you think of that? I need to get that t-shirt made up, huh? <laughs> That's pretty good. You know, I've got Biden, Harris hanging in the lobby of the building I work at. I tell people, hey guys, my office caters to children. And they're like, what? Really? Your office caters to children? And I'm like, yeah, I've got pictures of clowns on the wall. <laughs> Oh shit, man. That cracks me up because they know where I work. You know, growing up, we all struggle in school, right? I mean, we 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 have our own set of issues in school. And uh, you know, I was put in special ed once. I know I got into a lot of fights, missed a lot of class, so my GPA went down because I just wasn't doing the assignments because I was getting in trouble. Uh anyone who looked at me wrong, I would fight them. I just had a lot of anger in me. This is the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And so, uh, you know, they threw me in special ed so that I could catch up. Which is kind of odd. I'll get to that in a second. But anyway, I was in special ed. You know, they came to me one day and said, Dan, you're going to join the star class. You know, I was so excited because I was like, yes, I always want to be a rock star. You know, what young man didn't want to be a rock star? Boy, was I disappointed when I walked into that classroom. <laughs> I I fit in, though. You know, I stuttered really bad back then. You know, I really only stuttered when I got excited. You know, I, <laughs> that teacher, <laughs> I stuttered all day long. You know, the class never made any sense, though. They went slower so we could catch up. Hmm. You know... We learned about volcanoes in that class. I remember it distinctively, seeing the slides up. I wanted to know how volcanoes exploded, you know, why and what happens. The rest of the class was learning how to spell volcano. Catching up though, the teacher in that class was one of those ladies that would talk over you. Seriously guys, she wouldn't let me get two words in. You know, I would walk into class and she would say, good morning, how are you? I would smile and say, what, 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 what? She would cut me off and say, you're fine. Sit down. <laughs> oh, man. But stuttering did get me in a lot of trouble while I was at school. I, I, I'm i serious. It did. You know how they say when you stammer and stutter, you're telling a lie? You know, it's a sign of guilt. Well, I was called into the principal's office once. And he sat me down. And he said, can you tell me about what happened at lunchtime? I began to respond. But, 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 I got suspended. <laughs> You're lying. You're stuttering all over the place. You know, I did come from a poor family. We were we were dirt poor. On a rainy night, we would take turns wringing out the towel that we sat in the window to catch the water that leaked in. <laughs> I, I, I'm not kidding, you know. And when the wind blew, you know, the, the house would kind of rock like this. There's some fun times being poor, you know. But I, I remember one time I spent the night with a friend and found out they didn't put water in their cereal. They use milk. That just blew my mind. I thought that was only in the movies and Saturday morning cartoons. You know, milk and cereal. Uh, people do it all the time. I never knew. Boy, that was an adventure. Watching TV. Speaking of Saturday morning cartoons. My mom always told me not to sit too close to the TV. But how else am I supposed to hold the foil antenna? You know? Because, you know, you had to hold it up like this, like this. One day I asked my dad, can we get cable? Because I heard about this new thing that all the kids were getting. It's cable. They could watch cartoons all day long. I'm like, what the hell? He said, the one plugged in the wall? That's good enough. Not what I really meant, but I got the point. 
we weren't getting cable. You know, we didn't have very many toys back then. You know, I I had a few sets of Legos and some Hot Wheels and stuff. But uh, when you grow up poor, you have to find things to do to entertain yourself. And one thing, one thing that we used to do, there were two or three other boys that lived down that, you know, several mile dirt road. And we all got together and ran 200 acres of woods. That was the best part of my childhood is those woods. We found a game to play. Comment below if you've ever played this, but we created a game called Wasp Nest Baseball, okay? And the rules of the game were we'd find one of those, you know, almost like paper wasp nests that hung from a tree, you know, the big ones. And we would gather up these rocks, okay? And we would th take turns throwing them. If we missed, that was a strike, okay? If we hit it, that was a base, okay? We scored a base. But if we threw a rock and knocked it down, that was a home run because everybody ran home. I came home with uh, uh, stings all the time. I think one time my mom counted uh, 24 yellow jacket stings. <laughs> I had poison oak, poison ivy. I had uh, poison something that you've never even heard of, you know, because I grew up out in the woods. You know, we were playing in old hog pens and... Uh, you know, it, it was a good childhood, but I was poor. But that didn't mean I didn't have a good childhood. So, you know, I'm not saying I had a bad childhood. I love my childhood. The love of a mother, it comes out in the food she prepares. My mom must have hated me. <laughs> she used a microwave for everything she made. I ride my motorcycle a lot, and when I'm in my helmet alone, I do some thinking. And one thought I had is, you ever wonder what the turds do in a sewer all day? Do they aspire to be bigger things? Do they dream of the asshole that flushed them away? Do they tell each other that their breath smells like shit? Do they compare the size of corn? Most of them just grow up to be Democrats. Alrighty, guys. Well, that's going to be it. Uh, let's, let's move on to uh, the rest of this video, okay? I pretty much narrate some things uh, in these video clips I'm going to show you, just showing you what I'm up to out there. Uh, pretty much narrate it, but uh, if there's any additional narration that I need to do, I'll put it in text. Uh, but yeah, so I hope you enjoy, guys. Uh, we're working hard. We're we're really wanting the house built, and it's always been a lifetime dream. Alrighty, guys, we're back out of here. There's my trusty mini excavator. I'm loving it so far. And you'll see right here, I've got some uh, markings in the dirt here. And this is where our power room is going to be. It's going to be a, a 10 by 5. And this is the first thing that I wanted to get done because it's going to be a secure building. I can leave my generator out here. and Not that anybody's going to come over still. But I'm more worried about the elements, the rain, the bugs, the spiders, or you know. And this is going to be a completely sealed building. It's going to be built like a house with a roof, shingles, front door, everything. And it's going to even have an AC unit on it uh, so it can keep the generator room cool. And that brings us to this big-ass water tank that's on the back of my truck. And that's where it's got to go. And being underground will keep it from getting hot in the summertime it would keep it cool and uh so that we can actually have some cool water coming into the house how am i going to get the water from that one to there this much distance well aha i have an idea all righty guys this is a 12 volt pump this is what we're going to use to transfer water and uh this pump is a vevor and it's supposed to do uh like four no 5.5 gallons per minute that's about what a normal house will do it's a little pump it, it costs under a hundred dollars it's designed for rvs it, this one's actually designed for a very large rvs and it supplies water to the sinks and the showers and the toilets and stuff in an rv do rvs still have have that that blue fake flush shit i don't know i don't own an rv uh, a new one. Well, I don't know, one period. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to use this pump to transfer the water from this tank over to here. Temporarily, I'm going to plug it into my, my truck 
in order to supply power. Eventually, this thing will be ran uh, to 12 volt batteries that are gonna be charged by the sun. So I'll never have to pay to run this. And we're gonna to try to run this to the house and use this as a supply to the house. I don't know if it'll last. I don't know if it'll pump all throughout the house, but you know what? We're gonna give it a try. And if not, then I'll buy something bigger. I was looking at some that would definitely work for the house that is like 200, 300 bucks. Don't you hate when your hose is stiff in the morning? That's a problem I don't have a lot is tripping over my own hose. Alright you guys, I'm going to pop the hood and hook up this pump and if everything goes right, water will start flowing into that tank. Let me show you. It's getting the air out of lines I would imagine. Alrighty, so now we actually have... Whoa, that almost was out. Look at that. Look at how good. Let's see what kind of pressure I get. Wow, that's some good pressure, man. That's awesome. So that's some really good flow. I am happy with that. Look at that. Look at that. It's transferring. All righty. Well, I, I've actually uh, did a preliminary outline of the foundation. And I used the 345 method to get perfect 90 degrees. Because the last thing you want is starting to pour your foundation and your blocks run off of your footers. So uh, this is just preliminary. I'm going to remeasure everything and get a more accurate uh, measurement before I start digging. From that corner peg to this corner peg is 30 feet. What do you think, man? It's going to be a big house, big project. Something I've been dreaming about all my adult life. Okay, a quick little video uh, about where my conduit is. The small conduit that's going to carry the 12 volt lines to the house are right here. They go kind of off in an angle here and then are shooting this way along with this larger conduit. This is going to be the conduit that takes power into the house from the generator slash uh, solar power. I'll have my switch box mounted here so I can flip between solar and generator, send power to the house. And then I'll have another conduit coming up in the wall uh, just in case I have main power from the power company. Whew, it's getting hot. I'm almost done. So now all I got to do is rebury this line. Just wanted to say about 10 feet out is where I've stopped. From this corner is 99 inches out is where it stops. So when I need to continue it to the house, I'll be able to know where to dig. All right, folks, welcome to the Cobra construction site. <laughs> there you go. So anyway, we got our excavator over there resting for the, the uh, big foundation dig that we're going to do soon. So we got our foundation poured. We got all of our conduit in here that's going to run wires to different places. Uh, the goal is to have our generator sitting, sitting right here. And uh, I'm going to pipe the exhaust out so that uh, this can be a sealed building. I'm going to have insulation so it's going to quiet the generator down. Uh, I might put a muffler on the exhaust so that it's nice and quiet. Because uh, this house is going to be uh, off-grid. We're going to rely on solar and generator power uh, to get us through. Well, that's the plan anyway. <laughs> So I got a two by four uh, header for the door there. It's a doubled two by four header uh, laminated together. If this was a lot of weight that's gonna be sitting on these walls, I would have put uh, a two by six at least. I forgot that I have to frame in a, uh, a square for an AC unit. Because anytime the generator is running, uh, that AC unit is definitely going to run. Uh, keep everything cool in there okay this building i wanted up uh, right away so that i could uh, store my tools in here because 
my truck is a toolbox right now. That's where I'm storing all my saws and drills and everything. Uh, so it would be nice to be able to put them all in here and not worry about it. Alrighty guys, were you ready to see it so far? Here it is. That board's for support. I can remove that now. I just put that there to support the first truss. When I look at the trusses, they all seem pretty damn even. I'm, uh, I'm impressed with myself. This is my first set of trusses I've ever built. I got my little step poured that I said that I was going to do. I left the 2x4s around it while I'm dragging equipment and boards and stuff around to help protect the edges so I don't break any chips off because it's still still curing, still wet deep inside. But uh, what do you think guys? Am I absolutely crazy or is this going to shape up and be a nice sturdy building? Alrighty guys, well that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really hope that uh, you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you enjoyed seeing what we're doing out on the property. Stay safe, stay free, get the work done.